evening and welcome. Tonight we will be going over the history and geography of Anoban in Equatorial Guinea. And yes, it is a little tiny dot on my map, but I wanted to show you kind of this region so you can see exactly what we're talking about where this island is located in the world. You can see this is the Gulf of Guinea and it's categorized as being part of the Gulf of Guinea even though it's way down here. <laughs> it's not in the Gulf of Guinea but it's considered a Gulf of Guinea island and that's because it is part of a mountain chain known as the Cameroon Line that is an underwater volcanic ridge that comes up, 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 up through here. It's all underwater here. I'll show you on Google Earth in a minute. And then comes up here and then into Cameroon, making this chain of really incredible volcanoes here up in Cameroon. But the line of islands is pretty much Bioko, Principe, Sao Tome, and Anoban. So that's what we're talking This is Equatorial Guinea right here, and the island of Bioko as well is part of Equatorial Guinea. In fact, the capital city currently is on the island of Bioko. They're building one here in the inland region known as Rio Muni, uh, but it's still under construction, so it's still Malabo. So Equatorial Guinea consists of the Rio Muni region here, Malabo Island, and Let's talk about how this island became part of this country. Nobody lived on Anabon Island until the 1400s. The Portuguese, sailing along the coast of Africa, discovered it on New Year's Day, 1473, and gave it the name Anoban, which means good year. So, they were hoping for a good year ahead, as we all do every January 1st. So when they saw the island, it's named Goodyear Anoban. It wasn't colonized until 1474, the next year. And I tried to look up what exactly they were growing on this island. I assume um, down the line, probably sugarcane, right? But at first it was probably more like fruits and Maybe some spices, I'm not sure. They were trading all over the Indian Ocean at this point, so maybe they were bringing over spices to grow. I didn't find what they were trying to grow, but I assume eventually it became sugar cane. But they populated this island with slaves brought from Angola down here, because this was also Portuguese territory here in Angola. So, sailed the slaves up here to work. Their, I assume, plantations again. I found nothing about what they were actually doing here. I really tried, but I assume plantations of some sort. And since it was so isolated from not just like the rest of Africa, the rest of the Portuguese colonies, but like the rest of the world, it's pretty isolated. Its own culture developed. They developed their own form of Portuguese Creole. And the people, the like Creole people, we would call them in other parts of the world, people who are part Portuguese, part African, in this case Angolan, were called the Foros. I'm sure you roll that R, the Foros, who, like I said, created their own style of culture. In the year 1778, the Treaty of El Pardo was signed between Spain and Portugal. And that was because of what was happening across the Atlantic in South Africa. Because the Portuguese and Spanish were stepping on each other's toes in terms of the border of Brazil. Right? So the Treaty of El Pardo designated 
borders of Brazil or the borders between Portugal and Spain in South Africa. And in exchange for Spain recognizing a huge chunk of South Africa to Portugal, Portugal gave Spain some of its land in Africa, which included Equatorial Guinea and Anobon. So Spain moved in to start taking over the administration here. And the people of Anobon weren't very pleased about this because they were Portuguese. They always had been. And again, like, there's no indigenous culture here. They, they, they're just Portuguese speakers, or their own, you know, Portuguese Creole, like I said. So they rebelled pretty aggressively to the point where they created their own autonomous government and controlled the island in their own way. Because, like I said, not just isolated from now Spain or Africa, but, like, everyone. It's very far from, like, Sao Tome is the nearest. But Spain eventually came back in in the uh, late 19th century and asserted themselves and said, you are Spanish. And Spanish is the official language of Equatorial Guinea, but people here still don't speak Spanish. In 1827, part of the island was leased to Britain. Britain had made the slave trade illegal. Slavery itself wasn't illegal, I suppose, um, in the British colonies until the 1830s, but the slave trade itself was. So Britain occupied and built forts on a bunch of islands here in the Gulf of Guinea to monitor passing ships and um, rescue any slaves that could be on them. And Annabon was one of those islands. Usually Britain would try to gobble up a couple of those islands if they could. Once Equatorial Guinea became independent from Spain, they once again came down to Anabon and said, Listen, you are part of our country, you're going to speak Spanish, you're going to follow our rules, and the people here weren't pleased about that. And they also pushed back and rebelled against the government of Equatorial Guinea. But um, it's a very, um, how do I put this? Like, I want to say, like a dominating government. It's one of those where the government controls everything in the country. It's kind of hard to push back against that, but um, Anabon still just kind of does its own thing. Like, as long as they say they're part of Equatorial Guinea, that's all they care about. Um, they're mainly interested in this island because there's a lot of oil in the Gulf of Guinea, as Nigeria has learned. Um, Equatorial Guinea is starting to um, take advantage of that natural resource, Gabon and Angola especially. Um, so they have an interest in Anabon because someday there could be an oil industry there. From what I can tell, it's not really there yet, but it has the potential, so I could drill getting one to hold on to it. And that is the history of this little Atlantic. Let me show you what it actually looks like and show you the big extinct volcano on it. Check this out. Let's see how I can do this. <laughs> um, let me adjust this a little bit. There we go. Sorry that you can like see my hands in various shadows. Um, I've, I've struggled to try to eliminate that with various lighting, but it's kind of impossible. So, sorry about little Anopon. I'm zooming out so you could see exactly where it's located and so I can show you the mountain range underwater. So here we can see Africa. There's the little Anopon there in the ocean. So here you can see the, uh, the mountain range underwater. I'm gonna move my mic. It's the glare's in the way. <laughs> it's the best I can do. The underwater mountain range. Little volcano. Up, up, up until they start to breach the surface here in Anoban, Sao Tome, Principe, Malabo, and 
then you can actually see the volcanic chain continuing up into the mainland here, creating big, very active volcanoes in Cameroon. But Anoban is a dormant volcano. You can see the various little peaks made over various eruptions in the big crater lake here. I wasn't sure how to pronounce it. Um, sorry about my neighbors stomping about. Lago Apot, I assume. You can see here it's Lago Masafi. Everywhere I looked, it's called it Lago Apot. I assume that's the local name and the official Spanish name. But let me put it on 3D so you can see just how cool this island is. It's got uh, some big peaks and things and a nature reserve. And uh, sadly, there's not a lot of photos to show you, at least on Google Earth on this island. But it's so, so pretty show you this slideshow here. Get that beautiful coastline. The nice water. Look at it from above. I love this picture. You can see the lake there, the mountains, pretty clouds. And there's the capital, the big runway for the airport. And a little example of what the residential areas look like big harbor there. And of course it's very beautiful and tropical. Lots of um, vacationers come here, but it's one of those that um, it's kind of like niche travel, like you only really come here if you've ever heard of it and just want to claim that you've been here. This looks like a volcanic plug, doesn't it? Like this was lava that shot up and hardened. There is tourism here, like I said, like but no real tourist industry. So if you come here to explore, you're on your own. You've got to figure things out. you got to figure out the language and all of that. And uh, explore it yourself, pretty much. Cool cave. So like I said, here's the capital, San Antonio de Pali. And what's interesting is that there's not really a lot of slideshows. Pictures to show you. But... This Seventh-day Adventist church has some really cool pictures, not so much of the church itself. To here it looks like, I'm not sure what they're doing, but this looks like volcanic soil of some kind. So they're digging some kind of hole there. It's where they baptize people, surely. Working on the rainy day. Friends there. <laughs> He's happy, enjoying the coastline. Look at this breezy palm. Beautiful rocky coasts. I imagine the waves crashing. It sounds incredible. Enjoying a hike up here. What has he got here? It kind of looks like bananas or some kind of plant. I'm not sure. But they're about to go hiking up in the jungle. There's the, I guess that's the little center area of the church. And you can see the city down below. There's the big runway of the airport. Some of these cool natural features formed by eruptions so long ago, making neat little hills and things. Exercise day out in the city. <laughs> See, this looks like a volcanic plug to me, but I couldn't find any information about it. But look how beautiful and tropical it is here. Sing it at church. <laughs> really sing. Look at this. This is like a picture of the church, but this is an actual photograph. It's a picture of a picture that someone's holding. And the beautiful water and sunshine. See? And there's the church service. What a fun slideshow. I wonder why so many pictures just got attached to that church. I don't know. I want to show you something else. Maybe um, some of you can figure it out. So here's the airport. Here's a big football sports complex, and look at this. What in the world is this? I tried searching, searching for this too, and you know, I'm trying to search like the, the football sports, and all I'm getting is like games that are played here and all that, and I'm like, but 
what's this? It looks like, I want to say it's almost like solar panels. I want to say maybe it's a solar farm, but it's shaped so strangely. Maybe it's some project that's under construction. Like, you see all these cool roads? I couldn't find anything about this. It's so unique, and um, now it's like when I look at the island, it's all I can see. It sticks out like a sore thumb among all of this, this beauty here of the island. Like, what in the world is that? I have no idea. If any of you know, please let me know, because I'm dying to know. It looks like a solar farm, but it's the strangest solar farm I've ever seen. And like, it's the size of the football pit. I wish I could show you more pictures of the nature reserve, of the little towns down here along the coast, but there aren't any slideshows there. Got the big crashing waves here. Big peak right here. Let's put it in 3D again. Come on. There. Big peak right there. But yes, that is all that I have for you for tonight about Anoban. So thank you so much for watching. If you're new here, please consider subscribing. This is an ongoing series on my channel. Oh, it sticks out so much. Uh, next we're going to go to Madagascar, and I absolutely love how my videos about Madagascar get so many views compared to other like African countries, island countries, obscure regions. Gonna want to see this one. Let's see. We're gonna look at lots of lemurs in the slideshows that I'm gonna show you. You don't want to miss out the lemurs, so be sure to subscribe. And I hope that you found this video relaxing and educational. And I hope that you have a good.